1736, and at the age of 47, Lady Mary Wortley Montague fell madly in love. The object of her affections was a 24-year-old bisexual Italian author named Francesco Algarotti, who during his travels across Great Britain took London by storm and stole Montague's heart. In one of her many love letters to Algarotti, Montague encloses a poem alongside a portrait of her younger self. This once was me, thus my complexion fair, my cheek thus blooming, and thus curled my hair. This picture, which with pride I used to show, the lost resemblance but abrades me now. Yet all these charms I only would renew to make a mistress less unworthy you. Tis said, the gods by ardent vows are gained. If this her wish, however wild, obtained, Pygmalion warm to life his ivory made. Will no kind power restore my charms decayed? With useless beauty my first youth was crowned. In all my conquests I no pleasure found. The crowd I shunned, nor of applause was vain, And felt no pity for a lover's pain. Pangs of passion coldly I despise, and viewed with scorn the ravage of my eyes. Now that contempt too dearly is repaid, the impetuous fire does my soul invade. O oh, more than madness, with passion view, a heart could only be inflamed by you. In that loved form, there does at once unite all that can raise esteem or give delight. A heart like mine is not below your care. Artless and honest, tender and sincere, where no mean thought has ever found a place. Look on my heart and you'll forget my face. Montague's poem, This Once Was Me, offers commentary on a woman's transformation from a desired object into a desiring subject through the process of aging and her subsequent loss of youthful beauty. In doing so, Montu questions how female poets are able to express their subjectivity in their verses. If we see poetry as a vehicle for expressing desire, how can women writers assert their subjecthood when in the past women have been reduced to mere objects of desire by the same canonical works they seek to rival? Montague terms a subject position typically seen as lacking in power, an older woman without the social currency of beauty or reproductive viability, into a powerful one. In fact, she seems to contend here, as well as in her correspondence with Algarotti, that it is with age that women gain the agency to voice their desires, and are thus able to claim a subjecthood that youth and inexperience deny them. By prompting her lover to view a portrait of her younger self that she no longer resembles, Montague invites him to look beyond it and to be aware of the temporal gap separating the voice speaking from the page and the static image of her earlier self. Although she tempts Algarotti with the image, she ultimately seduces him with her wit and intellect, asserting that it is her heart where her true value lies. Indeed, as a woman whose face was left scarred by smallpox, Montague defiantly lays claim to the parts of her identity that are ineffaceable. Montague also undoes the gendered oppositions of poet and muse, lover and beloved, writer and addressee, by alluding to the queer possibilities implicit in Ovid's metamorphoses. In the tale of Iphis, a daughter who has raised a son fears that her womanhood would be discovered upon her arranged marriage to another woman named Ianthe. However, Iphis prays to Isis and is transformed into a man, conveniently allowing them to enter into a heterosexual relationship before the wedding night. Whereas the sudden turn to heteronormativity in the metamorphoses denies Iphis and Ianthe the possibility of lesbian desire, Montague's adaptation of Ovid 
renders herself more masculine in order to be sexually appealing to her bisexual lover. Montague laments to Algarotti in a letter written the same year as this once was me, you must believe that you possess in me the most perfect friend and the most passionate lover. I should have been delighted if nature permitted me to limit myself to the first title. I am enraged at having been born to wear skirts. Additionally, Montague's inclusion of an allusion to Pygmalion, a sculptor who brings a beautiful statue to life, expresses a wish for the masculine agency to turn her beloved into art and art into her beloved. While many scholars depict Montague as being bereft by her relatively one-sided love affair with Algarotti, who is characterized alternately as being inconstant or indifferent to Montague's advances, this once was me allows Montague narrative control over the object of her desire. Although Montague reveals that her portrait is a poor representation of interiority, she simultaneously privileges what the objectified Algarotti represents to her, an escape from the stranglehold of domesticity and a loveless marriage, a return to youthful passion, the recognition that she can be consumed with desire for someone and perhaps be desired in return, and a muse who serves as a wellspring for poetic inspiration.